African leaders will head to St. Petersburg at the end of the month for the Russia-Africa Summit, the second of its kind. Title, Second Russia-Africa Summit set to strengthen ties amidst geopolitical tensions. As the world eagerly watches developments in Russia's conflict with Ukraine, the Russian authorities are steadfastly preparing for the second Russia-Africa summit, scheduled to take place in St. Petersburg at the end of July. This summit aims to enhance further peace, security, and development ties between Russia and the African continent, but it comes at a time when the West is calling on African leaders to reconsider their alliances with Moscow. Despite concerns about the choice of location and the nature of these diplomatic engagements, African presidents still need to pursue various summits worldwide. Mariama Diallo, the chief of VOA's bureau in Nairobi, Kenya, delves deeper into the upcoming summit and its broader implications. The significance of the second Russia-Africa summit, the upcoming Russia-Africa summit is a sequel to the historic first summit held in Sochi two years ago. Russia's interest in strengthening ties with Africa lies in the continent's vast potential, not only in terms of natural resources but also as a promising market for Russian goods and services. During the previous summit, Russia signed various trade agreements and economic partnerships with African nations, indicating the mutual benefits both parties could achieve. The geopolitical context, however, the timing of the second summit must be addressed. Russia is entangled in a protracted conflict with Ukraine, resulting in international sanctions and criticism from Western powers. In response, Western nations have called on African leaders to reconsider their relationships with Moscow, alleging that supporting Russia's actions may have repercussions on the African continent's stability and international standing. Why St. Petersburg and not Addis Ababa? One of the questions raised in light of the summit is why it is being held in St. Petersburg, Russia, instead of Addis Ababa, where the African Union's headquarters is located. The African Union is the central platform for discussions and cooperation among African nations, making it a natural venue for diplomatic engagements. However, Russia's choice of location is driven by a desire to showcase its capabilities and investments in St. Petersburg and strengthen bilateral ties with specific African countries. African Presidents and Global Summits The concerns voiced by critics go beyond the choice of location. Some argue that African presidents seem eager to conduct summits with various countries worldwide, visiting capitals across America, Europe, Asia, and beyond. While these engagements might be seen as an opportunity to attract foreign investment and foster diplomatic relations, critics believe it sends a negative message about the continent's sovereignty and independence. The perception of post-colonial behavior, the sentiment of feeling ashamed as an African is rooted in a complex history of colonization and post-colonial dynamics. Critics argue that frequenting foreign capitals for summits might reinforce the perception of African nations being dependent on external powers rather than assertively shaping their own future. While it is essential for African leaders to engage with global partners, striking a balance between diplomacy and maintaining sovereignty remains challenging. Conclusion The second Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg is approaching amid geopolitical tensions, drawing attention from the West and raising concerns about African leaders' choices. Despite criticism and apprehensions, African nations are pushing forward with various summits worldwide to strengthen their international ties and attract investment. Finding the right balance between diplomatic engagement and asserting their independence remains a complex challenge for African leaders. As the summit unfolds, the world watches closely to see how the evolving geopolitical landscape will impact Russia's relations with the African continent. African leaders will head to St. Petersburg at the end of the month for the Russia-Africa summit, the second of its kind. The event will focus on enhancing cooperation in such areas as development, security and peace, even as Moscow persists in its aggression against Ukraine. International summits involve an element of political theater, analysts say, and African attendance will be a measure of success for the St. Petersburg gathering.
So I think there'll be a lot of focus on who attends. And last time in 2019, when the world looked very different, uh, before the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, there were 43 African heads of state that went to Sochi for the 2019 summit. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has led to higher food and oil prices for many African nations. They're under a lot of pressure with what's happening in Ukraine and the ramifications of the conflict there, which is commodity prices, particularly for Africans, but also everything that is happening with Wagner and so on. So this is an opportunity for Russia to try to assert its place on the global stage as well. And trade will likely be a major topic of discussion. I think there will be talk about trade. Uh, Russia's trade with Africa is really negligible. Uh, China and the EU are by far uh, much bigger uh, trading partners with Africa. Russia is also looking to get around sanctions imposed by the US and its allies. No African countries have imposed sanctions on Russia. And so it's, it's a lucrative market for it. We, we saw a similar pattern um, after the invasion of Georgia in 2008 and the first invasion of Ukraine in 2014. As Western markets closed to Russian business, they sought markets elsewhere. And of course, Africa, Latin America, Asia were areas where they did seek to expand. The UN General Assembly in February passed a resolution demanding that Russia end the war and leave Ukrainian territory. While 141 countries voted in favor, two African countries voted against it and 15 abstained. I mean, Russia benefited from that. Uh, in the sense that it showed them like they have friends. It's simply an awakening on the African part, but particularly sending a message to the rest of the world that we also have our own foreign policies and uh, those reflect our interests, our national interests. Dizolele adds, however, that the optics of one country summoning the leaders of an entire continent undermines Africa's efforts to assert itself on the global stage. Mariama Diallo, VOA News, Nairobi.